Beyond Insemination, the show hosted by three-time regional amateur speedophile personal watercraft racing champion and all San Andreas barbecue sauce manufacturer of the year, 1997, 2000, 2003, and ruminant fertility guru, Dwayne Earl. Well, you stepped in it again. Another episode of Beyond Insemination, the show that breaks down complex life issues and turns them into easy-to-understand analogies of lust, murder, and parenthood in the animal kingdom. Okay, okay. What track are we going to start the show off with today? How about this one? Makes you feel like you're in your own goddamn movie, huh? My movie would be called Dwayne Earl Part 2. Listeners, I want you to imagine this music playing, and I emerge from a yurt dressed as a Roman soldier, and I'm in a pit with a bear, and he's lunging at me with his razor-sharp claws that catch my cheek. Blood begins to run down my face, and I taste it, and my eyes narrow to focus slits, and the crowd of drunken onlookers are screaming for death, and I appease them by springing on that bear's back, slitting his throat cutting out his heart while still pumping and sink my teeth into it and hold it up in the air to the cries of the crowd, overtaking by such an emotional spectacle that they are reduced to tears. And two scantily clad women run to my side, each one on the ground clutching a leg, knowing that I am the man. Now that is a movie that would fill up the multiplexes. It also, my friends, is how I spent last night. For reals. Gladiator fight, straight whiskey and frisky chicks. That's how Dwayne Earl rolls. Let's get this going. Dennis, you are on the air. Welcome to Beyond Insemination. Hey, Dwayne, big fan, man. Really big fan. I love your stuff. (laughs) Man, I got a photo of you on my wall. Man, I'd let you go with my girl. She does backdoor everything, man. All for you, bro. Anyway, anyway, I am so excited right now. I love you, Dwayne. Man, I love you, man. It's like... What are you doing? Hey, Ma! I'm on the goddamn radio! <laughs> Dwayne! Wrong show? That show about animal sex! <laughs> no, the other show about animal sex! Dwayne, so... Hurry up! Shut up, Ma! Dwayne, I love you. <laughs> so, so, I was thinking about going to the Cunning Stunt Academy. Didn't you go there? Well, brother, it is true that I was destined to be an alumni of that prestigious institution. Some will tell you that I flunked out of the Cunning Stun Academy. That is only true in a manner of speaking. They burdened me with low grades because of the fantastic things I achieved. I was better than the teachers, and no one could stand the humiliation. None of them could hot dog on a speedophile personal watercraft on dry land, and nobody was prepared to jump out of a car at high speed onto concrete just to win a bet and shatter their pelvis in the process as I did. I say, screw that place. I lost my big toe to that maneuver, but I would do it again. Dennis, you can do better than that place. Much better. I've said it before, and I will say it again. To make something proper of yourself, you don't need schooling. You need a pack of smokes and a wild animal to wrestle. Every man should exhibit his dominance over each member of the animal kingdom. (laughs) When it is complete, I would invite you to my roadside theme park called Dwayne Earl's Ark. In it, we will have a pair of each and every animal species, and you can pay a fee and you can wrestle with them. From warm-blooded mammals to fierce-fighting reptiles, endotherms to ectotherms, we have the lot. Believe me, I have been humbled by many beasts in my time. But life is, after all, a journey. One of the central tenets of this show is education through nature. There are animals in nature, such as lizards, that specialize in a sit-and-wait hunting strategy, meaning they wait for the prey to come to them. Now, this is a technique that I utilize myself. Just last week, I was on the sofa in my front yard, and a person approached me for directions. Suffice it to say, I pounced like a hungry Komodo dragon, and when that gentleman came to in the trunk of his car many miles away, he was missing the contents of his wallet, his wedding band, and also his MP3 player. Fortunately, predominantly filled with power ballads. Andrea, you're on the line. Welcome to the show. What's troubling you, hot stuff? Tell your Uncle Dwayne. Hi, Dwayne. Love you. Love the show. Love math. Anyway, I just don't know what the hell is wrong with my boyfriend. He just ain't into me like he used to be. My dear Andrea, I believe the helium has gone to your mind bone. I do not host a relationship show. We're here to talk about animal husbandry and the pleasures available only to the men's species. 
Relationships is not something I have any great insight into. When she calls it a relationship, it's time to skip town. Am I right, fellas? Please, Dwayne. He's a big fan of yours. I'll put him on the line. Hello? Who's this? Uh, my name's Owen. Owen, I am not here to become betwixt you and your lady troubles. I am here to talk about rodeo and gunsmith and then fertilize of the herd. No, please, Dwayne, 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 Dwayne. I, I beg of you. you. You have to help me, man. She's freaking going crazy with those itty bitty rhinestone kits. You know that they put downstairs above their, their intimate venue. It started with hearts and cute shit, but then she got out of control. She does these huge murals. Special holiday ones, right? With woodland seeds, with talking squirrels. I just can't take it. Seriously, I can't stand it. It ain't right. Are you with me, right? I mean, that ain't right. Am I right? Owen, put your woman back on the phone this very instant. Uh, hello? Andrea, you have bejazzled your last rhinestone squirrel scene. You hear me, girl? Do you hear me? Yes. Listen, women were not meant to make artistic montages around their lady parts, no matter how pretty nor imaginative. All kinds of sparkly things in your thighs and above your lady lips is now, from here on out, banned. It ain't proper. That stuff is for men only. I cannot feel like I'm about to tongue a disco ball. Life is not a hip-hop video. Get rid of the beaver bling. Is that clear, girl? Yes, Dwayne. Louder! Yes, Dwayne. Now say it like you're enjoying yourself. I'm just kidding. That's a joke. Now, dear listeners, I have a confession to make. I am sure this revelation will reduce more than a few of you to tears. I have been diagnosed with a disease. It is something that baffles medical science and kills most people that contract it, but I look at it as a ray of sunshine. I have a great disease, alcoholism. I have won the lottery. I mean, yes, I could have gotten herpes, but I didn't. I probably should have. This disease is great. Sure, I end up sleeping with some ugly chicks, but now that I know the symptoms, I know how to take care of myself. For instance, it is unwise to mix cocaine and grain alcohol for more than three days at a time. And that's a fact I have learned. Some fella told me that at one of them meetings. Then he gave me a hug and a keychain. Strange business. I do not hug men, no thank you. I hug girls and procreating sows. And the latter only to ease the process as nature intended. I spoon men, just like any other normal fella. But hugging? Hugging, putting your arms around another man? Are you serious? Whatever will they think of next? Who's on the phone and how can we go beyond insemination? My name ain't important. Oh, it's my old friend Clarence, everybody. You son of a gun. Clarence is a stand-up guy. I say that even though he is in a wheelchair. <laughs> Clarence and I fought in the war together, right on the front lines of the war on terror. We'd drive around at night and join a cold one. If we saw a foreigner acting squirrely, we called 911. Right after we shot him. Dwayne, I got good news. I don't need the wheelchair no more. It is a miracle. My prayers have been answered. Many a time when I was down on both knees giving a working girl the business, my mind would turn to you and that you are a cripple that can't enjoy the pleasures of the flesh. No, no, I don't need a wheelchair because I got a motorized scooter now. The Relax Power X from Ambulate. Dude, I had that thing lowered, neon, custom paint job, overhaul the engine. You wouldn't believe the mad booty I've been getting lately. Besides, my doctor says I don't need a wheelchair or whatever and that I can walk just fine. I'm just tired, Dwayne. You know how I do. I like to sit down, have a beer, masturbate, you know, relax. Oh, that's wonderful news there, Clarence. I love hearing you're getting booty. Thanks for calling into the show, buddy. I love you, always will. We received an electronic message in our inbox last week that says... <laughs> Dwayne, you are so great on the radio. I was wondering if you've been watching the TV reports about how over in Asia they got the epidemic of bird flu. Well, thanks to everybody for writing in, especially to the listeners asking for a signed photo of my flaccid member. Now on to your question. I do not give a crap if some bird has the flu. Do I pause if a robin sneezes or a parrot coughs? No, I do not. I'm not a veterinarian. The maladies of animals are irrelevant to me. People raised a stink about swine flu, saying it was going to ruin the bacon. That barbecue tastes just fine to me. Let's move to the final portion of our show, Romantic Interludes with Big Dwayne, where I call a previous love interest live on air. Today, I'll be calling Marnie Smith, the cheerleader I went to high school with and harbored feelings for that I kept at bay by throwing Chinese stars at strangers and indiscriminately burning things. But today, I shall fess up as I have obtained her phone number. 
I am so excited for this shit. Hello? Hello? Marnie. Yes, it is. Hello, Marnie. This is Dwayne Earl. And as you can tell by the melodic and poignant music playing in the background, I am about to unleash a barrage of emotion that has been trapped inside of me for these past 20 years. We attended Central High School together, and I sat behind you in science class. And on days where there was a football game, you wore your cheerleader outfit. To this very day, I nearly break out in tears that I have not told you of the thunderous lust you arouse in me. Now, I would not break out in tears for real, as a man's tears are saved in a special place for when his favorite stock car driver loses. But know this. I, as often as this week, have kept you in regular rotation in the Dwayne Earl Spank Bank. I fantasize about you turning around in science class and asking if we can get together and study for the test. And you'd arrive in my domicile, and I'd show you around, offer you a cigarette I'd stolen from my stepfather. And in the backyard, I performed feats of greatness, exhibiting my skills in archery, knife throwing, and camouflage face painting in particular. And we'd have a fireworks war with Roman candles. Then ride fast on a dirt bike by the stream, and you'd have your arms around me, and I'd pop a wheelie, and you'd fall off the back and break your leg, and I'd console you, and we'd make passionate love in a cloud of exhaust by the dirt bike still running, our youthful giddiness accentuated by the intoxicating fumes. And we're making love, and even though your leg was broken, I'd be unable to discern if your screams are from passion or pain of a femur cracked in two. Anyway, that's just how I saw it. Aw, Dwayne, that is so sweet. Thank you for receiving this so elegantly. It has been a mighty burden on me that such fantastic times never did materialize before I began to lose my hair. However, know this, Marnie. I still have a ponytail, and it is one of my most attractive features, especially when I wear a baseball cap. You should come by for some pie so we can catch up. I would very much like to embark on this Epicurean endeavor. You know, Tracy Bish, she used to talk about you. She said you had problems performing. Tracy Bish is a goddamn liar. And if there were any performance issues, it is because my third brain could predict the future. And it knew she would one day be fat and have that, like, fat that swings on her woman's arm and that her breasts would move like woeful pendulums, unable for any self-respecting man to love them. <laughs> it's a boner killer. Instant futuristic boner killer. I saw the future and that woman's future self destroyed my boners. Goodbye, Marnie. I will stop by your house soon on my dirt bike. Woo! I hope that cheerleader outfit still fits. This has been this week's episode of Romantic Interludes with Big Dwayne. Let's get on with the show. Next caller. Hi, Dwayne. Thanks for the show. You know, you always hear about America as the land of the free, but that's bull crap. I got arrested for my religious beliefs. Now, how's the government and politicians going to tell me how many wives I can have? I, I, I like having five wives, you know? I mean, sometimes they, you know, they gang up on me and they wrestle me, tie me down. You know, I like women to humiliate me, Dwayne. I mean, really treat me like crap. Okay, right there. Here's what I don't understand, Hotshot. If you want to have five beautiful chicks, that's awesome. And something that I partake in on a regular basis. Often after a bowling night when the ladies are all lubed up. But you polygamy guys, phew, I just don't get it. Why is that? Well, because every time you see pictures or footage, the women, they're, they're always so frumpy. Get two hot chicks, not five chubby, hairy ones, and they wear those terrible old lady dresses that cover up the important bits. On my farm, we have a bunch of women, and they work with nothing but a bikini and a gun belt on. And them's the rules because of women's lib. Jeff is on the phone. Hi, Dwayne. I'm a member of the Ovine Liberation Front. There are some terrible things going on right under our noses. Atrocities on these farms. We've snuck a camera in and are going to expose it. Did you know that they're killing animals on some of these farms? And then they eat them. It's like a zombie movie. It's horrible. Everything should be allowed to live. Just think about a world with the streets full of cows and chickens and velociraptors. It'd be great. You could hug them. Sounds a bit like Australia. That's pretty much the third world, ain't it? Uh, precisely. What we want is our own world, a fourth world, where we can snuggle with a chicken or a goat, lay in the hay together, where nothing dies. Listen up, Jeff. You are going to have to understand that the good Lord made natural selection for a reason. It is well known that shark embryos cannibalize their litter mates in the womb, with the strongest one eating all the siblings. My mother was pregnant with triplets, but when she went into labor, only one came out, and that was me! I won! That's the way nature works, son! You can't fight nature! 
but you can wrestle with it at Dwayne Earl's Art. Stop by and tell Tammy that you heard it on this show, and she will give you a commemorative koozie for your beer so that it will stay cold as you tour the premises. That's about all the time we got this week. This has been Beyond Insemination. I'm Dwayne Earl, and you're not. This has been Beyond Insemination.